After 8 years of hibernation, Mega Man has finally returned with his 11th installment. A lot is riding on the newest title, especially after one of his original creators, Keiji Inafune, had a less than stellar result with his pseudo successor, Mighty No. 9. Despite the doubts of many due to the transition from the classic 8-bit style graphics to more modern cel-shaded aesthetic, Mega Man 11 proves to be a much more solid experience. That being said, it isn't without its flaws. The plot is as goofy as it should be. Back when Dr. Light and Dr. Wily were young scientists, they both pitched their respective projects to the head committee. While Light's project gets accepted, Wily's does not. Believing that his Double Gear project is far superior to simply granting robots free will, Wily swears revenge on Dr. Light. And out of nowhere at present day, while he just so happens to remember his old project and decides to rebuild it again and test it on 8 robots that the Blue Bomber must defeat. So yeah, 10 games later and only now you remember this. And you're Dr. How? The gist with Mega Man 11 is exactly what one would expect. There are 8 robot masters who need to be defeated one by one, gain their respective powers, and then face off against the maniacal mustache doctor. It's a familiar road to trudge along, but it's a formula that still works and gives players the agency to choose the way they want to play the game. Mega Man can not only use his trusty Mega Blaster as his main form of attack, as well as, you know, jump, but for the first time since Mega Man 8, he has regained both the abilities to slide and charge shot. I didn't really miss those abilities in Mega Man 9 and 10 because of the whole return to basics mantra, but in Mega Man 11, it's nice to see a more complete blue bomber. The newest gimmick is the double gear system. By pressing either shoulder button, Mega Man can either increase his attack power significantly with the power gear, or slow time considerably with the speed gear. However, in order to restrict Mega Man to not be an indestructible force, the system has a limited time of usage as it needs to cool off. In fact, the cooling meter must not reach the maximum level, or else Mega Man won't be able to perform any double gear action until it cools completely. That means that time can't be slowed down indefinitely, and it's key to know how to use this power. If you get hurt, for example, slowing time means that the staggering period will just last longer, and thus wasting more energy. While well, slowing down time with a speed gear in a fast-paced platformer like Mega Man, where split-second decisions are essential, is such a tremendous boon, the same can't be said about the power gear. Using it with the regular busted power makes the shot stronger, but not enough to really make a difference. It's more cost-effective to use regular shots without wasting much energy and save it towards the slowing time. A charge chart combined with a power gear can be devastating, but more often than not, it's hard to execute since the usage time is so short. What is great though is that every single sub-weapon can be enhanced thanks to this gear, even if it does drain your ammo much faster. The levels themselves are cut from the same cloth you'd expect from Mega Man games, despite the shiny coat of paint. While some levels are a traditional affair, like an underground construction facility or an Arctic paradise, some do stand out like Blastman's movie set, which might be one of the coolest levels in Mega Man history. But as much as I really want to love this game and its unique gimmicks, I have to admit that Mega Man 11 is incredibly challenging, and sadly not for the good reasons. Going into it expecting to have the speed gear that slows down time will make the experience much easier is a recipe for disaster. In fact, Blockman and Impactman stages barrage players with ample homing projectiles that are just incredibly difficult to avoid. Not only that, but the staggering time after getting hit is much larger, causing Mega Man to freeze in place and be vulnerable, or even worse, fall into a bottomless pit. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a newcomer to the series. I have played my fair share of Mega Man games, and Eleven is by far the only game in the series that pretty much made me feel that I had to spend every single ball that I collected in the shop in order to just see myself to the end of just the normal mode. I do like that the ball shop this time around gives you some new equipable items to use, like one that enhances the cooling system. It's just a shame that if you want to reduce the amount of knockback to be more similar to the previous game in the series, you actually have to buy an item for that, and that feels rather cheap. But back to my point, the beauty of the Mega Man series is that even when you have all those unique tools to finish a level, the game can still be tackled by solely using the Mega Buster. 
11, however, has so many moments that players will have to use a specific weapon unless they want to fall into their doom, losing a life, and going further back in the level. While the game itself is shorter when it comes to the level count, the levels themselves are probably the largest yet, and to add insult to injury, the checkpoints are far from one another. Thankfully, there are multiple difficulties as I mentioned earlier, especially with newcomer and casual for those who are deterred by the difficulty, though I personally found the normal mode to be downright punishing. But despite my little mini rant, I'll definitely say this, the bosses are some of the best in the whole series, even if they do tend to follow similar tropes. Trundraman looks like another rendition of the Ice Boss, but his figure skating motif alongside with his lavish attitude makes him a delight. More importantly, Wily has installed in each of the 8 Robot Masters their own double gear system, and more than often they will either speed or power up to change up the traditional boss patterns. And you know what? Even the mini bosses are pretty cool. Some of them have unique designs with some really cool mechanics. Even when I initially thought that fighting against the inflatable frog and bouncement stage was kind of annoying, it turned out to be pretty challenging. The bosses are pretty much the highlight of the entire game for me. And besides, freaking Blastman looks like Bakugo from My Hero Academia. Come on, just give me a good look at the two of them and tell you there's absolutely no resemblance between the two of them at all! Oh yeah, even the sub-weapons are great. And that's because each one of them has their own unique usage in battle. Blockman's blocks are perfect to deal with airborne enemies, and Bouncemen's weapon are three rubber balls that just ricochet everywhere. Impact Man's weapon is probably my favorite not only because it's a cool dash attack, but you can also use it to cross gaps. I think the only one I didn't like was just Acid Man, if only because you cannot shoot your weapon immediately when you create a shield, and that can be kind of problematic, especially when you have to deal with a specific enemy. There are also challenges in Mega Man 11 once you finish it, but unfortunately, a lot of those are time challenges in which you have to finish a level as quick as possible to win a bronze, silver, or gold medals. The best one is by far Balloon Rush, in which you have to pop every single blue balloon in the screen while avoiding all the red ones. Visually, there is no denying that Mega Man 11 cell shaded graphics are its biggest selling point. Not only that the levels and characters are colorful and vibrant, but the animations are smooth and in general the frame is very solid. The soundtrack forfeits the chiptunes of Yorn going for something more techno inspired, and while it definitely fits, it's not as memorable, though there are some good tracks, just not my favorite Mega Man soundtrack. This is also the first game in the series since 8 that actually has voice acting, and for the most part, it's really good, especially Dr. Wily. Some might have issues with the deeper sounding Mega Man, but honestly, if it's that big of an issue for ya, you can always change the language to Japanese. Let those robots go, Dr. Wily! At last the world will bow down to the genius of Dr. Wily! At the end of the day, Mega Man 11 is definitely a step in the right direction. The unique graphical style, the clever gear system, and probably the most fun I've ever had fighting bosses in the series so far. However, the overly brutal difficulty and the over-reliance on the shop does take it down a few notches. While it's not the renaissance that Mega Man 9 achieved 10 years ago, it's definitely a game that fans will find something to enjoy. Just put your expectations in check. I hope you all enjoyed this review of Mega Man 11, and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the game as well. Hopefully I get to make more of those reviews down the line this year, but until the next time, you guys, take care.